Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Our guest today is one of the funniest dudes on the uh -huh. planet. You already know. Uh -huh. We're going to give you a flowers today. <laughs> He's been in the game 30 years, stand-up film, TV. He's also the host of the Spears and Steinberg podcast. Yeah. Eric Spears, we appreciate you pulling up. Yo, what's up, man? This is, yo, this is, I'm bugging right now, man. Yeah. Part, 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 you know, because I'm obviously a basketball fan, but I, I, I knew when I was driving through the gated community, I live in a gated community, but I, didn't look, I don't live in gated mansions. <laughs> so when I was driving here, I, I felt myself going, I'm in the wrong business. No, no, I'm no. in the wrong business. Woo! So normally we shoot upstairs, we downstairs now. You see the jerseys. Gil, you, you literally, like, each one of your levels is bigger than my whole house. Um, come on, dude. This is phenomenal. You <laughs> no, got, like, multiple this, houses. This is one of those cribs where when the girl come back to the crib for the first time, if the panties don't start slipping immediately down, <laughs> take her back. Take her back. <laughs> it's like, it was so funny. It's, it's, I guess, one of the ex-mayors owned the house, and it was just built for partying. Oh, wow. You know, so it's just big, it's just big right. spaces right. that you got to feel like. Like, I, it made me think of uh, back in the 80s when rope chains was a thing. You know how, you know, my house is like a nice rope chain. Uh -huh. Your shit is like Run DMC <laughs> cables, nigga. I have to tuck my shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we got a ton of stuff we're going to get into, but first and foremost, I know you're a big Jordan guy, but we got to yeah. talk about, you know, LeBron and these Lakers. Mm -hmm. Is this the most disappointing season for a team in NBA history? Well, before I dive into you, uh -huh. some of the things I've heard you say, <laughs> uh, let me just say for the record, and everybody that know me and follow my Instagram, which just got back up after being welcome suspended. Welcome back, welcome back. Um, I'm a Jordan fanatic. Uh, and this whole LeBron Jordan thing to me was never really a debate. Okay. Uh, I respect the man's game. I, he's nice despite many of the things that I've said and poking fun. I respect him. You can't not respect him. And the man is, 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 is one of the best. But he ain't Jordan, B. Jordan's the GOAT, man. End the conversation. And this season right here, we can finally put a pin <laughs> in that garbage. What? <laughs> this season right here. So we go Mr. Wizards, Jordan? <laughs> Wait a minute. But, even, but hold on. Even that Jordan was doing just as well as the average player in the yeah, no, NBA. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah he you was average. I mean? He was no, still he was, putting up 20. Yeah, he was yeah, average. He was putting up <laughs> At 40. You know and he was giving <laughs> some of the premier players the business. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I, whenever someone asked me, I say, what happened with like 80s, 90s, if you notice most of the GOATs, are actually in that era. It's just the way like society was at that time. So when you think about goats, right. they're usually sitting in that 80s, 90s, 70s era. Um, Jordan, what he brought to the game, style, grace, talk, he became the Bugatti. Okay. The, 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 the just one of one. No one can reach it, period. No matter what you do, you can't reach that vehicle. Okay, well, first, let me say this. I, I personally have a problem with people going, there are many goats. No, there's only one goat. Mm -hmm. And then we're not handing out, you know, and I'm not saying these other players are fifth place, but mm -hmm. everybody can't get the trophy. Mm -hmm. and, and whenever I get into arguments with people about goat, here's one of the, the things I hear people say, which really gets under my skin. Well, if it's about rings, then Robert Ory, he got seven. Mm -hmm. Yo, if it's about rings, then Bill Russell, <laughs> mm -hmm. he got 11. And I go, y'all don't understand what totality means. Mm -hmm. the, the recipe for good gumbo, mm -hmm. AKA GOAT, mm -hmm. you have to have it all. Mm -hmm. It's rings, it's stats, it's influence, it's pop culture, it's global phenomenon. Mike possesses a lot of things that some of those other dudes don't. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, Bill Russell, 11 rings to be commended. But you played in an era where you was one of three <laughs> in the whole era. And Larry Bird himself said, basketball is a black man's game. Mm -hmm. Anytime the opposing coach put a white guy on me, it offended me. The best players are black. Mm -hmm. So if you're one black guy in an era with three black guys, and you're a giant amongst midgets, mm -hmm. and with a shortened season, kill that argument. And then when people bring up Robert Ory, here's what I say. 
Y'all don't understand the difference between being the reason you win and winning for a reason. Mm -hmm. Robert Ory, right place, right time, seven rings. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't the reason they won. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need role players. But when you look at guys like Magic, Michael, Bird, Kobe, Shaq, Hakeem, those are franchise. Mm -hmm. They're the reason their teams win. Mm -hmm. Robert won for a reason. So understand the difference. No, They're missing me with that shit. No, no, no. When I say goats, I mean like music goats came from the 80s, 90s. Yes. Like oh, yeah. the 80s and 90s. No, but that's what, is the said, best but that's what I said. It's the best era. It's the just, best era. It's ever. just for some reason. That's just the best era. Who today is better than Mike Tyson? <laughs> Who today is better than Whitney but, Houston? What's so funny? Who is, today is better when, than when, Michael Jackson? When you're having an argument, that's where you're stuck. It's like. When you're talking about today versus the 80s, it's like, yo, anybody who breathed in the 80s, you're not going to win an argument. It's like you're trying to win an argument. It's like, I, but do you say that because you agree? Yeah, but even with me, I'm like, yeah, who can beat MJ? Who can beat the other MJ? Who can beat, yeah. Tyson, Let me ask you this question. Who can beat, who can beat anybody from the 80s? Let me ask you this question. <laughs> like, what happened in the 80s that made everybody the... This is posed to both of you. When people brought up the debate, who would win between the 72 and 10 Bulls and the Warriors with KD? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I give the Warriors maybe two games. Ooh. Maybe. Who's okay, so, okay, so what you really have. And I don't give a damn about the errors. No, no, no. Okay, so when it comes to styles, you have, tr tr you have a defensive team. Four, like four to five starters. You're talking about premier defenders. You're talking about pure to premier, just straight premier defenders, and they're all at the same position. Two three okay. point assassins. And then you have, Curran then Bush. you have, you have all guard play on. A, but you have Michael Jordan. <laughs> like, you got Scotty. You have Michael. They have a KD. Scotty's on KD. Scottie's he ain't stopping KD, but it's gonna be a tough day at work. So Mike on Steph, who go, who's stopping Steph? You don't know. Ron, 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 Ron Harper's going to be a Ron problem. Harper. You're, you're going to pick so Ron. Michael on Clay. Put, Michael's Michael. destroying Clay. Right. Yeah, it's going to oh, be. Yeah, but you got to remember, it's 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 so it's because that was the team that was the that was a small ball team that nobody actually paid attention to. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's a perfect matchup. But you know when you have when you're talking about somebody like Jordan coming through the lane. Like, he's going to average 40-something that series because there's no one that can physically stop him. And, so it, and if to. you are talking about today's rules, yeah, he's going to average 40, maybe no, no. more. What's so funny is no matter, like, the, the, the thing is, it's going to be KD and Jordan. Those are, be, those are going to be two premier players because they don't have a seven-footer that's going to be able to keep up with him. No matter if you put Pippen on him or Jordan, I mean, or what's name, he's still going to be able to pull up on anybody. So it's... It's it's those two, and then Jordan is going to carry because no one is physically. And you don't think that that uh, from a shoot. you give them two games, I'll, I'll give them one, maybe oh, okay. two. Like I want to say sweep. That, yeah, that's Damn. what I said. I like. I mean, like, Damn. Depend, depending depending on how mad Michael is. Okay. But, but you got to remember, but you still got Katie is just a different beast. So okay. He can, he can carry. He can carry the team. He can carry a team. Because you really like, he's gonna put Pippen in foul trouble. He's gonna he'll put those guys in foul trouble. But there's nobody stopping Michael from getting to the basket. Okay, th this might be my old man. But shit. I don't I don't think Golden State wins this series though. I'm gonna be honest with you. This might be my old man shit. But I don't really think the Warriors beat any of those teams. Bird, Celtics, Shaq, Kobe, no, no, Lakers, no, they, they them Pistons, uh, the the bad boys, well, Shaq and Penny, Magic. I don't see them beating none of them. Ooh. Y'all started. They're the most right overrated now. team on the planet. No, they they <laughs> you gotta remember the, the way they play the game, they have they have players that can put that ball in the basket. Steph. You guys you gotta remember, Steph, you have to actually be in like people don't understand how in shape that man actually is. For him to run around the way he does, pass it, give it up, sprint, like he's I'm pretty sure he's doing five to three miles a day in his off season. It's just unreal. The, 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 the way he moves without, like moving without the ball is the most important thing for him. So if you're trying to catch rest, you're never going to catch it on him or Clay. It's just one but of those you, things. You don't think, as, as Barkley has alluded to a lot of times, he ain't going to be doing all that Steph shit because we're going to put a body on him. We're going to make him touch the floor. Listen, that, that, that shit is so overrated. 
that, 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 put a bo- that, that put a body on them. That, what that is is I can't guard you, so we're going to foul you. That's Hockey all. Ball. That's all yeah. that basketball. Right. We all played that on the park. Right. Like we know how to play that game, but there's rules here. So if you're playing in the rules now, if you're playing in today's rule, Dennis Rodman is actually out because he physically can't use what he's gifted at. Like how he. So when people are like, oh, he guarded Shaq. Eh, no one's doing that no more. He can't touch and grab and hold and do all this pound for pound. He has to be able to guard someone who's dribbling and coming down the lane now. There's nobody posting up. Who's posted up on that Go to State Warriors team that he can sit here and play WrestleMania basketball with? That doesn't, he doesn't do that. There's no Shaq, there's no Hakeem where he gets to play that. He has to actually play skilled basketball now. All that fouling and getting him out of the air, that's tech, two techs. But the you fuck don't out. think he could adapt? But you can't, you can't say, you can't make him adapt. You got to take their skill as it is. When I have arguments, it's like, we have to take them as it is. We can't say, oh, yeah, we're going to give you today's right. skill and talent. We just say, well, right. you right. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's why I said, like, Ron Harper and all of those guys, they adapt. Uh, Dennis Rodman, listen, you have, on, you have um, Draymond. As long as he's sticking Draymond the whole time, he has the advantage over him. Right. Yeah. Because that's their style. They play a little wrestle game. <laughs> play a little... <laughs> The Fousey's game. Head game. And, yeah, the head game. Right, you know, right. Dennis Rodman wins that. Okay. All right. You know, so. It's, it's so hard with rules. It's just, it's just so hard when the rules has changed and, 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 and it's played this way. Like, you know, there's, there's teams like Detroit Pistons that say, well, none of, these, none of these guys can play in our era. First of all, y'all, half your team sucked. <laughs> like, they didn't have no skill. Well, they just clothesline you. That's, there's no skill in clotheslining. If I can say, yo, go out there right now, but it, give it, me well, six well, fouls. Okay, you can do that. But, they, but, but wait a minute. It took some skill because they won two championships against teams that were skilled. No, they had, we got to remember, 80s basketball, if you look at the skill level of some of the 80s players, you're like, so they're just never going to dribble with their left hand. See, here's... here's it's just... No, 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 just no, 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 no. Just, no, but wait a minute now. Dominique, wait, we wait, already know what he's going to do. Wait a minute, He's going to do the... He's going to dribble down that okay. lane with this hand and try okay. to win me with the two feet. Okay, but, but LeBron doesn't have finesse and grace and beauty. He, 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 he charges down, dunk, maybe a layup, but his game is all charge and brah. So... Yeah, no, yeah, he has a... He has a he ha- I call it the, the, the Hummer tank truck. It's like the train. Right. It's like that train game. Where, now, now I want y'all to realize, and, and some people be like, but they really got to think about it. Some people are like, eh, I, how fast <coughs> does he look today? LeBron. Mm-hmm. Imagine that in 2003, 4, 5, what we had to deal with. Look how he looks at 37. Imagine what we were playing against at 22, 23, 24. So when all this, okay, okay, so look. <laughs> right? Here's, here's part if of he's I, running through everybody at this age, what do you think we had to deal with? Well, wait a minute then. Wait, wait, wait a minute though. But, cause, and here's the thing. Like people will say to me, uh, people that haven't played professionally can argue all day. We do this all day. Mm-hmm. But then I go, to some of y'all who never played pro ball, y'all know better than the pros? Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't never touched a, a, a ball professionally. You gonna tell me they're wrong? And yet they'll tell you you're wrong. Mm-hmm. That being said, when I hear the younger generation go, today's athletes are bigger, stronger, faster. They're better athlete. Athletes, evolution. Yeah, but the, there's rest management. They don't play 82 games. They, they team up. They didn't team up and make the Avengers back in the 80s and 90s. They played all 82 games. They didn't wear goggles because they was afraid of champagne skeet. Like, they really were tough. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Straight to the The main mouth. players didn't leave their teams. The role players did. You got to remember, Ron Harper was averaging 20 when he went to go try to win the championship with the Bulls. Dennis Rodman left, right? So people left to go try to win championship because Chicago at the time was the team. Lakers at the time was the team. Like, so those players were, you know, like, you know, mid, low, high mid, you right. know what I mean? They left to go team up because Jordan wasn't going to leave. Magic wasn't going to leave. Kobe wasn't going to leave because he's in L.A. I'm in L.A. I'm not leaving. You're coming here. So it was e- it's easier for you to recruit if you're in L.A., right, versus, versus a star sitting in Milwaukee, Minnesota, Memphis. You're like, yo, you begging. Hey, man, no, 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 look, we got the tax. 
We got taxes for you. Right. But look, you ain't got to pay for nothing. Like, nah, I don't want to hear that shit. Man. Right. <laughs> like, I got to live. And nobody wants to live in Cleveland. So, so, so when the when the when the non basketball players, all the gazillions of people on social media, say that this era is soft, this era is not as hard. You totally disagree with that? They're soft because of rules. Not soft because they're just soft men. They're, I mean, you got to remember 80s and all that. Yeah, you, there was a different breed of people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but we've all played outside. We all played street ball. We all had to, you got to remember, making it to the NBA, you had to go through hardship. It's kind of, it's not an easy road. Right. Like, you know, so when it comes to just style, there's so much money that you can't be in 80s mind. Like, look at Draymond Green. He is... 10% of what Rodman was, right? If you look at him and compare to Rodman, like, though, you're like, you're like a kitty cat compared to what Rodman was. Yeah, but he's got 80s feet. How many technicals does this man get? Right. Like, he gets fined almost a, probably a million dollars a year. An 80s player couldn't take that. Back then, it was $2,000 to slap the shit out you. Right. I can slay, yeah, this Robert can slap and body slam you for two grand. Right. <laughs> now, now that's LeBron, LeBron's little elbow cost him, was it, $400,000. I'm not fighting you. <laughs> hold me back, hold me back, hold me back. Uh, yeah, I'm be soft as shit. That check, that check costs too much now. So to all the, to all the, the, the couch fans and the sideline fans that never did it, what annoys you most, or what, what do you disagree with, if you could say to them something? Besides shut the up. <laughs> Bas everything evolves, right? The reason just sports itself, like, so, it, it, like we want more entertainment, we want it faster. You know, we want it to look better. So when, when, when sports comes, you know, you, you have a game and like look at a game and it's like, all right, Spurs versus Detroit in a championship, and you know the score is going to be the 86 to 90. No one wants to watch that shit. Like you, we want to see the 120 versus 140. Okay. Uh, we want to see someone has 60. We want to see someone has 35. There's still people though that don't. That, yeah, that's yeah, the no, shit no, no, that's no, no. You still me. have your, you still have your, your brute type of minds that mm -hmm. want to see that grinded out playoff atmosphere type of games. But what I don't see, and I'm, and I'm really trying to look at this from a different point of view, but when I, again, when I hear the young crowd go, today's athletes in terms of evolution are just bigger, stronger, fat, I'm going, what dunks am I seeing now that I've never, what, what am I supposed to be seeing now that I haven't already seen? I'm seeing the same Take shit. The, no, it's, no, 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 see, it's not, okay, so it's not, it's not that the players are jumping higher. That is false. That is false narrative. They're using athleticism just different. Okay. So like, okay. so like if like, um, let's say Jordan had a 46, Dominique had a 44. These kids are not 48 and 49s. They're 42s and 43s still. But you know, Dominique's doing the windmill. One handed windmill, two handed windmill, okay. right? These kids are just tricking it out, making it look better. They're not jumping higher, they're just using their athleticism just a little different. I don't know that I've seen anything that, like, again, I, who's replaced Magic? Who's replaced Pete Maravich? No, who's replaced you, Michael George? You, who's replaced Takeem? You never. Okay, so but, who's but you, better? But you're not gonna, re, you're not gonna replace it, you're just gonna, you're just gonna But what I'm it. saying is, I haven't seen anything that made me go, oh shit, I ain't never seen that, or, Damn, that's better than Magic when he did it. But, that's better than so and so Vince Carter when he did it. You, I'm not seeing anything better. But, but you're, you're you're not. We're not going to see anything better. So, There's got, no, so we got to stop. I don't understand that label. <laughs> look, Today is better because you got to remember the young kids don't watch. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't go in the past and watch the archives. So we're talking about ignorance. Then. Yes. You young kids. <laughs> shut <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you don't. They don't. It's not like they go and watch history to see that there's a, like, like Pistol Pete, which, when it comes to skill level, he can argue, or just Pistol Pete fans can argue that he probably was the most skilled person that ever played the game because he had no reference when he was doing his stuff. That was just what his brain came up with. Coming here, throwing it off the elbow, this stuff. Because today they're still not doing the shit he did. 
in the 70s. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying because no one's going back and looking at those archives. You're only looking at what you grew up watching. But do you think Pete was doing that shit on his own or he was going in the hood it don't, and doing it don't, some Elvis type shit? I don't know. No, you can't, you, can't, you can't say he went to the hood and watched this because it never translated to the NBA. That's real. So he's doing, he's doing what his... The, the vision that's coming in his brain, like the stuff he's the stuff he's doing. And it's like, yo, none of these passes, some of these passes have never been duplicated. One of the one of the fiercest dunkers ever, Sean Kemp. Who's dunking like that now? Who? That's why I'm, it, I'm that, like that, 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 the noise on the on the bigger, stronger, yeah. better. You know what's so weird? Okay, so Ricky Davis did the between the legs, the East Bay dunk in the game back in 2000, what, five, four, five, six? The first time it was repeated was last year. Mm. Fast break, uh. <laughs> that's it, fast break, uh. It just, mm. it's, it's, that's what I said, the game is not, it's hard to say because because of the rules are being bent, because it's being bent and curved, it's right. hard to really gauge it, you know, to see like who can withstand past rules, the, the you know, time. Just it's just because it's 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 leaning. Like, you know, like I'm uh, like I look at the scores now, it's there's threes and layups only, but they're still only averaging hundred and four to eight. Eighties was actually scoring more than that. Eight I think eighties basketball it's either 70s or 80s, late 70s, mid 80s. They were averaging 112 to 116 points a game. Yeah. So they were actually moving faster. So with, with all the scientists and they doing all this shit, yeah. it, go to the 80s. They were, moving, they were moving faster than today's game. They're, they're averaging, the league is averaging 112 to 116 points. Right now with threes, and they're only averaging 104 to 8. All right, well, let's keep this thing moving forward. So, Aries, obviously we got you here. We got to hit you up on just your life. You've been in the game 30 years. Yeah. So I think a lot of people don't know. 16 years old, first time you got hit up for Def Comedy Jam. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind during that experience? A lot of us, when we were 16, shit, we were trying to get licensed or whatever. <laughs> you on the forefront, main stage of the most popular, you know, comedy show in the black community. Right. What's going on? You know, it was just surreal because you know, I started when I was 14, and, and I didn't know that Def Jam was going to be something to happen. I mean, the guy that actually, you know, they give a lot of credit to Stan Latham and Russell Simmons because their name is the brand, but the real genius behind it was a guy by the name of Bob Sumner out of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. He knew me and Bill Bellamy and, you know, Derek Fox and Hamburger Jones, and uh, he kind of <laughs> put Hamburger, it all together. Yeah. Yeah, he he kind of put it all together, and I just never thought that at that young age, I would be making a television debut. Mm -hmm. So it was weird because, you know, prior to, I, I was telling everybody, yeah, I'm doing stand-up at night. And listen, I wasn't a cool kid. Nobody was paying attention. Mm -hmm. But then when you show up on HBO and everybody throws a big premiere party, then the next day it was like, oh, I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was just surreal to know that I was coming into that reality. Because the very next year, I did a Showtime at the Apollo on NBC mm -hmm. when I was 17. So uh, after those two, two things kind of popped off, I was like, man, forget the school stuff. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. So what, what was harder of those two? Well, between? Between Def Comedy Jam and Apollo. What, were you I was more scared one? of Apollo because, well, first of all, I didn't do the regular, hey, he's coming out, rub the log. I was a special <laughs> guest because okay. I had already done Def Jam. Okay. But, but they could have booed me the same. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, listen, man, I, and I probably got a little bit of, a, of it today. That's a cocky mother, man. Like, I'm from New York, you know, and I, and I just came from that 80s era in New York, and I'm just, you know, I believed I was gonna make it, and I was believing the whole time I'm about to tear the roof off this mother. Mm -hmm. And that's just always been my mentality. Now, have I been humbled? Absolutely. Because yeah. um, this shit will humble you. Uh, but nonetheless, man, I, I, that's always been part of my cloth. So, I mean, a lot of people don't know, you got an NBA connection. Norm Nixon yeah. was Storm your first Norman. Norman. Everybody's watching Winning Time and kind of, you know, I see the way it's portrayed there and it's tough for me to watch because I know Norm and I know Debbie and, you know, they're great people. 
But how did you end up getting plugged up with, with Norm, and, and what was that like for you? And did, were you cognizant of kind of the NBA fame that he had and the Showtime and all that good stuff? No, I, I, I more, I more or less knew of him through Debbie. Okay. You know, fame, and and I knew that he was married to her, uh, and I didn't really learn about him deeply till I came to LA, and you know, at the tail end of, I think you know, probably like 16, set almost going on 17. You know, Russell Simmons wanted to manage me. Uh, I had another person, Barry Katz, Dave Chappelle's old manager, wanted to manage me. And then Norm heard about me and called me up, flew me out to L.A. for the first time. His house in Santa Monica. I'm seeing this flash shit for the first <laughs> time, and I'm just going, yeah, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, being around Norm was so cool because of all this connections, people in the business. He's best friends with James Ingram, his best friends with Denzel. So a lot of times when I would go to the house, I was meeting Denzel for the first time. I'm meeting James Ingram for the first time. You know, John McClain, who was one of the biggest uh, uh, people in the record business for Sony Music. So I just, you know, my world was blown open quick. And do you feel like some of that fame maybe came too early? Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. 16, 17 years old. You, yeah. You know, you, cocky, you got the East Coast swag. Yeah. <laughs> do you East look back? Is yeah. there anything that you kind of regret from those times? This shit I regret right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making mistakes right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm still, I'm, I'm learning, man. I'm, you know, and as you get older and you start to question your mortality and you, you make sense of things more. Mm. You know, I, I've done a lot of shit I regret. Um, but, you know, it's been fun failing sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I you mean, that's, that's, just, that's the game. That's Hollywood. Yeah. So, <clears throat> got to ask you, obviously. Yeah. Oscars, everybody saw the moment. Uh-huh. You up on stage. Yes. You make a, you make a J to a G.I. I'm doubling Jane down. <laughs> Smack me on live television in front of millions on Hollywood's biggest night. I'm doubling down. I would I, Listen, I don't do a good Chris Rock, but I would have been like, uh, you know, you so concerned with... Keeping your wife's name out of my mouth, you should have been concerned with it. Put himself in your wife's mouth. So I, you know, <laughs> gotta double down, baby. It was so funny. Is no, as a comedian, you would, yeah, because that's the whole point of, yeah, you know, being up there. Um, I don't know if it's me because I'm older, but it seemed like because you know, growing up in the '90s, you know, as a kid. Comedy, it seemed like comedy was this huge thing. Still in is. my world. Still is. It is? It is. Still is. Yeah, people people know. Listen, man. Like it, it is I, listen, like to the point where like listen, it only comedy is only soft if comedians allow them themselves to be soft. I'm I'm straight uncut cocaine. I, I, I'm unstepped on. I'm but, coke. I, but I, don't, I, don't, but, I don't bend. But that's why I but that that's 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 kind of the thing. Like, I look at the comedians that I watch, and right. I'm like, yo, your material is so funny, but today's time, it's so sensitive. So you got these watered down comedians and these watered down jokes, and it's like, you know, I, 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 don't I, even I think that's funny. I think the <laughs> pendulum will eventually swing back because I think the truth of the matter is, you know, look, man, this is America. We're Americans, we're arrogant. We don't like to be told what we can and can't do. So at some point, there's going to be a backlash where people go, enough is enough. I want to go back to where if it's funny, I laugh. Nobody's trying to hurt anybody as long as you're not physically hurting anybody. Uh, you know, good comedy is supposed to be a little dangerous. But then, then that puts, then it's like the people that's going to do that are the older generation. It's not going to be the newer kids. It's going to, because you got to remember right. the eighties, the eighties and nineties comedians, they have a different mind because right. they were allowed to do different things. The newer group, the, the 19 to the 20 year olds, because they've been babied the whole time, they've been censored. They, their jokes don't run like their jokes and the, the material they think of is already capped. So the person who's going to revert it back has to be your group. Here's the blessing and the curse. This. They live on this. Mm -hmm. Everybody lives on this now. And when you don't go outside and play in the woods, you don't play with sticks and bottle caps. Mm -hmm. You don't play the dozens. Uh, you don't get your ass whipped by your parents. And all that, you don't scrape your knees. Mm -hmm. You don't play football. We used to play, uh, you know, tackle football damn near on cement. Yeah. <laughs> and when you don't grow up, uh, in, a, in, a, in a rough sense, 
you know, you become sheltered. You become fifth place. Everybody get a trophy. Everything is all. And I don't like all comedy. Mm -hmm. I like all comedy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think people that really want it, they know where the cocaine is. Mm -hmm. You know, they know they got to go to the hood. To get <laughs> you got to go to the hood. That's yeah, what I'm man. You know, we, 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 co we cocaine comedy slingers out here. Mm -hmm. You know, my product's strong, man. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at that, the social media influence is kind of this comedy space. It's a lot of people, when you think about Vine and kind of TikTok in these yeah. spaces now, that it got elevated. Like, I make jokes on NBA Twitter, but I always say, like, I can't hold a can to what y'all do on the stage. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I, again, it's, it's the blessing and the curse. You know, the, the good thing about the phone and the social media age is it does give some people who are really talented a platform and a voice to show what they could do. But that's also the curse. It's like, you know, Studio 54 and its heyday. Everybody don't deserve to, to get past the velvet rope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't talented. Everybody shouldn't have a platform. But it's giving guys who think they're funny a chance to show that they ain't funny. And because of how comedy is now, I, I just look at it and I go, that's funny? That's mm -hmm. viral? I'm out here busting my ass doing Steven Spielberg mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm lights and, you know, uh, jokes and, and writing and heavy shit and, and a cat in a bag. A, a dance? But that's, yeah. what I, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is what is considered comedy now. That's why I was saying, is it still funny? Because I know what jokes are. I know what, like, I, I, I watch Richard Pryor stuff, and, and I sit here, like, you know, I was a big Al Bundy guy, so yeah. I'm, I'm big in that era, and I just be like, I watch it now, and I'm like, whoo. Oh, no. Dude, let me tell you something, and this is not me being vain or patting myself on the back, but... You know, what we did on Mad That's, TV oh for a long time would not be done today. Uh, all, what was Married with Children wouldn't exist today. Hell, the, 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 the Archie and uh, uh, what was that show with the Bunkers? Uh, all the all family. the Family, the Jeffersons, that wouldn't exist today. And, and that to me was great comedy because it was edgy, but it wasn't just being edgy for the sake of it. They, they, you know, there was a message behind it. It dealt with real shit, racism, homosexuality. And I think that when you can tackle serious shit with a comedy, what's better than that? You know? Do you, like if they broke Mad TV back? They tried to. They tried to. But you, on the CW, uh, first of all, you know, we came on Saturdays at 11. Mm -hmm. They brought it back Wednesday at 9. So immediately, you've cut off your foot. Yeah. Because you can't be as racy as you can be at Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Um, and then it just, it, it just, it didn't have that magic, man. It didn't have that magic. And they brought, they brought, and when I say that, I go because they brought a lot of the old okay. cast members back to do cameos. Like, oh, shit, remember? Mm -hmm. And we could feel it. That shit you know, don't we work. We got around each other, me, Mo, Deborah, Will. It was like, don't feel the same. Yeah. Like the energy is all that. Like, the, the, yeah. like that, this shit is, that, like I yeah. said, you wake it up, that shit was hilarious. Like, yeah. That was, that's what I said, that was TV. I don't see it. That's why I said, is it just me or where is the, the version of Mad TV? Yeah, where it's moist now. Part? Like, yeah. comedy's moist, man. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, everybody's so scared and walking on landmines about what you can say and, you know, and I think it's bullshit. I think it's hurting the game. But I do yeah. think it'll swing back. And the one thing that I take pride in is I want pe people to be able to go, yo, he never wavered. Well, well, there are some dudes who were a certain way to fit the climate, they wavered. And I, I don't know, I think that there's a nobility in standing your ground. It, this is, okay, this is a, a, a real question. When it comes to cancel culture, is it actually a real thing? Like, Apollo, they booed you. What's the difference between social media? When you tell a joke that they don't like, is it's a boo. Like, but that has the numbers shown no, when that you, when you cancel did, culture affects the actual... No, you run... I mean, uh, Louis C.K. literally just won a Grammy for a comedy. But that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, but you can run a bag up off that shit. That's the whole point. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, but, I, when, I, but with the Apollo, when they booed you, you really sucked. So, yeah, but that's really what, sucked. But, but but that's what I'm saying. Like Dave Chappelle trying to make it like is cancel culture just oh is it a real actual thing? It seems to be. That but it has the numbers be. actually proven that it's canceled? 
Like if I, if you do something. Yes, just to a degree. Because there are shows that have gotten canceled because of, or won't even air because it's too risky. That's different. Won't air means that person's scared to air it. What happens when you air it? Are there really people out there saying, we gotta remember, Trump, Trump showed the world that cancel culture is actually not real. Well, we're talking about the most superior but, white man but think about it. in He's terms go- of negativity. But what I'm saying is think about what, think about, he just cared about numbers, right? So he goes out, does, does his thing, right? I'm gonna go out, do my thing. I'm gonna go out, have a rally. 2,000 people are there for him. 20,000 people are there to F him. Yes. To him? 22,000 people. But, but let's be. But, this is the but, biggest but listen, thing ever. I, I don't know that I want to get too heavy off of sports, uh, but let's be honest because you, you have to mention this. What he was able to do in terms of galvanizing a, a, a whole group of people, a, a bunch of Americans, it was Obama backlash. It was white yeah. folks going, we didn't like having a president, and we feel like, you know, make America great again. What does that mean? Nothing. Make it great again. When was it ever? But, America's a great country, <laughs> but in terms of great for whom? That, that, if we go, if the further you want to, when you say make it great again, he's talking about going back. Going back ain't fun for niggas. No, but that's what I said. It's just, it's, it's perception. I thought it was a great slogan because it's your perception of when you thought America And it was actually great. isn't his slogan. Ronald Reagan did uh, it in the 80s. Because I thought, it, so when it was like, go back and make America great again, I was like, yeah, when I, man, but, 2003 but it, when I signed my contract. But, it, but again, we, we <laughs> I don't about, know who the president was. We're talking man. about a whole nation of people what? who felt like, you know, white people are becoming a minority, we're, we're losing our power, mm-hmm. we're not being heard, and here's, here, here's their savior, President Biff from Back to the Future. And here's this motherfucker talking about making great. He's telling them and letting them hear everything they needed to hear and feel to not feel like they didn't count. But he was the most hated. But, but that's what I'm saying. But, so when you so, say that, though, he got 70 million votes. So. But, that, but what I'm saying is, think, that's what I'm saying. And barely cancel, beat Biden. What, what I'm saying is, I mean, what, Biden barely beat him. When I'm saying cancel culture, when I'm saying this, if I do a special, right, and 5,000 people want to see the special, and 100,000 people are watching a special to cancel me, I have 105,000. 105, 100,000, 10 people who actually watch the special. I don't give a fuck if, they, if they're canceled. There's 105,000 people. Americans don't know how to hate. You, we don't know how to hate you. We think, hey, I, I want to cancel you. So we're going to go write shirts. We're going to buy tickets to your thing. We're going to go there and boo you. You don't give a fuck. I sold out. The, I, you, I you, sold you, it you, out. You don't give a fuck if it works for you. But yeah. I sold it out. We, gotta remember, we don't know how to boo, so that means we're going to stand outside. We're gonna stand outside in large numbers. You're gonna get, they gotta remember, to not, to cancel someone is to pretend they don't exist. We can't do that. We gotta let you know we don't like you. So if someone who just runs algorithms and they only care about numbers in a company, if you're trying to cancel, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the information out there and just see what the numbers do. If you don't watch it, you fuck me. Oh, here's t- if you're gonna watch it to say this suck and comment and say like, think about it. You're gonna write, if I have a post, you're gonna write 10,000 comments of you didn't like me. I got 10,000 comments. I'm gonna monetize 10,000 comments. Who cares what the comments say? Well, listen, here's the two things that I took from both those examples. I mean, Dave Chappelle seems to be uncancelable. So because the, his backing said we're not canceling, but but there's a reason for that, you know. We, Dave is it, Dave brings it, and when and when his numbers do what they're supposed to do and do what they've been doing, of course they're not going to cancel him. That's big business. But that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is in terms of Trump. Here's the thing. Yes, Biden barely beat him, but he beat him. So that to me, I'll take from that. You know what? Justice won. Mm-hmm. We got the bad guy out of there. Now I'm not saying I'm. You know, and this is where black folks will go, Biden ain't no better. And no, he may not be much better. I don't know any white president that really loves mm-hmm. him. But so they've all, you know, <laughs> given a shit. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it was about getting Trump out of there. He had to go. I just, I just. So I, that to me is like, all right, 
Whew, justice won. Dave Chappelle, they're trying to cancel him, but they can't. Those are two positives to but, me. but that's what I'm saying. And this is what I'm saying. If the backing doesn't cancel, then you can't cancel. Sometimes the backing gets scared because they think that something, if it doesn't mess up your bottom line, this is just any business <coughs> with going against cancel culture. If it doesn't mess up your bottom line, who gives a shit what they're talking about? White folks love that goddamn money, nigga. But I'm saying, but that's what I'm saying. I'm telling but you, like, nigga, Paul Mooney is speaking. But White folks love that goddamn money. I'm telling you that. Yes, but the bottom line, you if you're bottom line. A nigga, if a nigga brings white folks money, they love it. It's their spinach. It's Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Who's trying to cancel him? He didn't catch what I was doing. No, Paul no, Moody. I did. You're Paul okay, Mooney. Okay, but that's okay. what I'm who's, saying. Who's trying to cancel Dave? This small group of people. Yeah. But they're canceled. But, but, they're, but and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're one of the most powerful groups. No. Technically, they're not. They're really not. There's a reason why they call them the uh, alphabet mafia. But because people bend for it. Like, oh my God, 3,000 people is arguing outside. I need to cancel everything. It's 3,000 people. They're not going to buy your product anyway. I know what you're saying. They're, gonna, they're not going to buy the product saying. anyway. So, yeah. But unfortunately, that's how but, I look but at unfortunately it. that influence makes the people who have the ability to green light. They're scared. And the, and the, they're scared. They're scared. So, I, I, and the only way they're going to stop being scared is when we stop going for that shit. And, 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 and that's why I'm saying, I think when the pendulum swings, and it will, you know, it'll come to an end. Like I, I look at like Will Smith, right? Before, before the slap, his comments was at 6,000 that day. Mm. After the slap, he was at about five, half a million comments. But, but to me, I'm, sla I'm slapping everybody now. But that's I'm slapping this shit. I'm going around just slapping folks. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to monetize my comments and say, hey, listen, look how many comments I get in my thing. I need $20,000 for posts and I'll slap shit out somebody. I'm slapping until it just reverts back. You give me 6,000 comments doing all this clean shit and I slap it and there's half a million comments. Everybody's getting slapped. I'm going to be real. I wasn't even watching the Oscars. And then I checked Twitter. And I'd be like, I'm waiting to see what you're going to say about this. I'm like, what you talking about? Then you see it. But that's the thing. That's how social is constructed. They want negative shit. Like, people could talk whatever shit they want about Trump. But when they booted his account off Twitter, Twitter got kind of boring. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying. Like, it wasn't. Takashi 6 and I got the Instagram is boring because he, he's missing. Look. I hate that. Like, I, I do, too. But he's entertaining. <laughs> now you got your IG back, you know, I'm ready to see what's going well, down. I'm going to be careful now. Come on, but, I hear but you got it. I got to be moist. You, no, no, it's not moist. moist. No, no, no. It, it's about business. It's not in my best interest financially <laughs> to obliterate a platform <laughs> where I can make money. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to still be me, but it ain't going to be you know, Scarface balcony scene, uh -huh. me shooting a, a thousand Colombians. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, 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 you know. <laughs> only three, only three. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've had a super successful career, but I wanted to ask you about that. You know, Hollywood is a game, and I, I kind of touch a little bit. I had a show on Comedy Central, kind of learn the hard way. You know, the difficult, the terminology, they don't want to call you so you're difficult, or whatever, right. whatever the words are. Right. But your opinion made it do it. You've always stayed true to yourself. So how do you balance that? Has there ever been a point where you've looked and you're like, damn, I shouldn't have said this, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, yeah. And it's cost oh, me a job. Because oh, I, I deal absolutely. with that shit all Because people ask me about shit, and you yeah. know, you can't be like, oh, that shit was fucking terrible. Right. You always got to say the PC thing and support You know, it's it. so funny because uh, people think that just because I'm in the game of comedy, I'm not allowed to have an opinion on comedy yeah. and comedians. You know, yeah, I'm in the game, but I'm a fan of the game. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of comedy. So it's like, I'm not, I, I may not always go with the flow that everybody's going in when they go, this guy's brilliant or this guy is funny. I might go, to me, he's not. To me, I don't think it's as brilliant as you do. I'm allowed to have an opinion. And it's like, you know, in this game, opinion is, is, is often taken for hate mm -hmm. now. Oh, you're a hater or you're bitter. No, I have an opinion. Mm -hmm. So that to me is corny, man. But only, only like the true, like true, like competitors don't use it as hate. Like if I make a comment and say, yo, KD this, KD that, Kyrie this, Kyrie that, they won't be like, oh, he's hating. He's nitpicking at my game because he sees a flaw. I need to fix that flaw. So if someone says, oh, your comedy watered down ain't genius, I'm gonna be like, why? 
Like, what are you seeing that I'm not seeing? Yeah, I know I'm successful, but you're seeing something. You're seeing something that I can't right. see. You've been in the game this long. You're seeing something I can't see. What is it? I'm going to ask for that information. But I think because because everyone's so so sensitive just mentally that when you say something, I think we just just no matter what, when we look through comments, period, we look for the negativity. We look for the 10, the 10 percenters. We care about what the 10 percenters say. Because we're human. Yeah. Cause we, you, and, I, and I think that's what people, we're, we're listening to humans. Everybody wants to be human until we do something. Well, here's what, but, but, <laughs> but this, but this is what I always tell people. It's, with, again, perspective. Like, I, you know, through Twitter, I, I became friend. I, I knew him long before Twitter, but Ice-T followed me. Certain celebrities would follow me, I talked to. And when they would go, yo, Ice-T washed up. Or they may say, yo, Gilbert Arenas is washed up. Mm-hmm. Or whatever they say. Mm-hmm. I go, I'm in this nigga's crib. The, 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 the wall look like a museum. Who, how many people got that? Mm-hmm. Y'all buy jerseys out of Foot Locker, and maybe your favorite athlete signs it, mm-hmm. or maybe he shits on you, or f- a girl. But this got jerseys signed by the real players. Mm-hmm. I've been to Ice T's crib where the elevator comes down, and in the garage where I'm looking at three cars boom, boom, the McLaren, the Ferrari, the Bentley. He go, nah, I'm going to take the uh, something else. Well, where, where it coming from? It's three cars. <laughs> the floor to the garage come up with a car under that. I ain't no bitch. I'm all male. <laughs> I got wet. Yeah. And I'm going, this is 20 years of law and order money. Mm-hmm. Not to mention rap. Not to mention the rock group. Not to mention acting. This is 20 years. What are you? talking about washed up uh, regular <laughs> kill me man i'll be like yo th- there's a reason why you make minimum wage <laughs> you're destined for it but they find comfort in each other which is crazy. comfort yeah you know that's I mean? the wackest goofiest shit i've ever heard it's comfort it's but your yearly income has one comma it's it doesn't and, say it's comfort it's that and i'm washed up i got two commas but but just like anything when they call you wash, you're not allowed to use your money to, to, to go back at them. Shit. That's why I use they, they, You may say I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. They I spend it. Yeah, but that's what I said. Right. You, you, you're, you're at a, you're, they, handica- they handicap your argument. Right. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's like a rap battle, right? It's like a rap battle. Someone goes at you and they be like, well, don't money talk me. Bar for bar. <laughs> what? Right. <laughs> But don't money talk you. Yeah, right, that's, right. that's all I want to do. Right. right. <laughs> bar, go bar for bar. Yeah. I'm not bar for bar. That was 20 years ago. Do I remember when Cat Williams made the joke where he goes, remember that at one point in time they were saying that the Chrysler 300 looks so much like the Bentley. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he made the joke where he goes, you say that until you see an actual Bentley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the same thing. Like, huh? and, and so many of these dudes out here that ain't never seen real success, mm-hmm. ain't, ain't never had the, the bravery to go for their dreams, they're driving Chrysler's. Mm-hmm. This is a Bentley. <laughs> Where I live, gated community, this is a Bentley. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about? This is the world we live in mm-hmm. with social. I mean, this shit is wild. It's like, they'll look at you and be like, yeah, you never want to race. That sounds like $200 million in contract. Like, what are you talking about? I, I, you know, I, I heard, um, I don't know, it was a Luda. I think it was Ludacris who said this. He said, man, I had a career. What that career means, there's ups, there's downs, there's peaks, there's valleys. That is a career. We all wash up. But when you get to that shore, how much sand do you have in your pocket? Mm. When, you, when you wash up on that shore, how much sand do you got in your pocket? Because that's all that matters. We all hit that. We're all going to hit the sand. Right. How much sand? When you, right. when you do this, how much sand right. is coming out your pocket? And I was like, right. that's a good ass, that's a good saying. Yeah. That's a good saying. Yeah. So I'm going to be real, you had a successful Hollywood career, but I want to know, has there ever been a, a role or a part you auditioned for you didn't get that you look back like, I'm, I'm perfect for that shit, and I don't, I don't understand, I would have killed that role. Tropic Thunder. Okay. Uh, oh. The Brandon T. Jackson got. Yeah. Yeah. Goddamn to work with Ben Stiller mm-hmm. and that, that cast, that, that caliber of movie. Uh, yeah. 
What were they looking for? Were they, oh, they well, I mean, you, you audition yeah. and they, you know, he had something I didn't. Mm-hmm. So, and, and look, man, he's talented brother, worthy, uh, you know, but damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 That's a, that, that, that's a perfect movie, though. That's yeah, man. Movie. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Perfect. But then I've got movies that other dudes didn't get. Like, I did The Pest with John Leguizamo. Mm-hmm. I played his best friend. But Romney Malco uh, didn't get that. I beat him out for that. And he's actually best friends with John. But then Romney was going on to do 40-year-old version, mm-hmm. uh, Think Like a Man. You know, so everybody gets, at some point, while one door closes, Something else opens for you. So when y'all see, is there beef when you got to see? Not beef no, per se, no, but I'm saying y'all no, see each no, other at all these no, auditions. No, you know no. right away if this is the character description, these dudes are going to show up at the. The hardest the thing for, for for a lot of us is like we'll go on an audition and in the breakdown it says we want a Cat Williams type, <laughs> we want a Chris Tucker type. <laughs> Where they go f- to get Chris Tucker? <laughs> I'm like, I'm bringing what I'm gonna bring to the. What a, what, a, what a slap to my talent. Then go get Chris. That's like being on a date with a broad and going, I need you to suck my dick like my ex girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and they be oblivious. That's the shit that's that the shit they do. But that's they the be shit oblivious that, to it. That's, but that's what they do. Yeah. Do you think that in Hollywood, when it comes to just black excellence, do they bring back and help? Well, like, you know, like, like, like Will Smith has his own uh, production company, Over right? Brooke, yeah. Like, does he, I, like, I don't know what he does with it. You know, I don't know if he's hiring more black actors or. He, he's stuff. produced a couple of things TV wise. Okay. I, I, I wish we did it as often as they, they do. do. Yeah. That's you what know? I was wondering. Cause now we're in position. So I see like 50 Cent, you right. know, 50 Cent is in, you know, he has his little power. So there's, there's, I can see it from that side, but yeah. like it's like, oh, that's new Hollywood. It happens. That's new it, Hollywood. It, 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 it I'm talking happens. about old I, I Hollywood. I don't think it happens as often okay. as it should. I mean, you know, when you look at David Geffen, David Spielberg, and I forget my other man's name, that formed DreamWorks, mm-hmm. Spielberg, Katzenberg. Geffen, and Katzenberg. And I'm just going, when you got a Michael Jordan, this billionaire, Oprah Winfrey, a billionaire, you know, uh, or whoever else I can name that's black and a billionaire, where's that studio? Where's that merger? You know what I mean? I don't understand why that hasn't happened already. Kid Tyler Perry. I mean, Tyler Perry. And Will Smith. Denzel, like, hey, just, okay. But then they, they got to rock with it. That's the, the thing. They've got to see eye to eye on shit. And I just don't know if that's possible. I, that, 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 great. That, Morgan, that, that, it's that, like, that, you got Morgan Freeman and all these other, y'all been in the game 50 something years. Y'all can put, put money something together, together for the younger generation. Yeah, that's man, gonna, I, you know. To make it a little easier. I think sometimes when, you know, you hear some, you, you hear like, like I heard Shaq say it, you know, you know, I'm rich. You ain't rich when he's talking to his kids. Yeah. No, you're going to have to earn it. Right. Isn't, isn't what you did for them to make it easier? Like, and I think that some of the times, some of the older generations like, no, what I had to do to get it to this, for, I'm not going to make it easy for you. Oh, it's a very, right, no, it's a very Scrooge on. McDuck right, mentality. Yeah, mine, 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 mine. Mm-hmm. Got here, you gotta get your, you know what I mean? But that's black Hollywood, though, I feel like. And that's black got, people. I did. Oh, yeah. but, you know, but I'm just saying, from the entertainment side, right. the old guard of black Hollywood was like, well, shit, we had to struggle and we didn't get the looks that, you know, the yeah. opportunities that y'all get, so we're not gonna with y'all like that. Yeah, you gonna it's have changing. You're gonna have to get to my life. But, but that's why I like, like, the, that's why I said, this is like the new guy, like, 50 Cent is like, it seems like he's put more people in the game he wasn't even an actor. He's put Listen, more people in the game. at the end of the day, thank God it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. And, 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 and if the goal is to, you know, grow and be better, then who cares where it comes from? But at least yeah, it's coming. coming. Yeah. But it's, it's long overdue as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like how does he, like, think about it. He's not, he's a rapper. Yeah. Right? Who says, it's, I'm done with it. Monique, your time is up. We need to get you back on there. Right. The rapper had to do that for that black queen. Like the rapper had to say, "Monique, now nah, we're gonna get Monique back in her pop." Her. It's, it's the rappers or the hoopers. That's but that's what I'm saying. How does this man, like Hollywood, <laughs> like you guys got all this power, it's, these it's, power, it's, and she got exile, and then a rapper brings her back because he got into power. Right. He's been successful. He's like, no, 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 no. Come on, Monique, get back up. Get this, back up. This is some goofy shit, for, man. Now they on stage with it, like, hey, yeah, this is my right, girl right, over right. 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a little fallout, but we back now. Right. Get the fuck out of here. 
Right. But it yeah, goes yeah. back to your point is if you are making white people money, then all that shit they'll put it aside. Right. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It don't make it. Yeah. If if, if they making money, we don't. Yeah. Money come on back in and give us some more money. So last thing I want to leave you with, last question. Obviously, you've been in the game a long time. If you had to make a Mount Rushmore or your top four comedians, people that you rock with, who are you putting up there? Well, I, 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 I do this in two parts. There's the Mount Rushmore and then there's the Mount Olympus. Okay. So the Mount Olympus is, is the gods. It's okay. Eddie Murphy, Pryor, Red Fox, um, you know, George Carlin. But as far as today, Dave Chappelle, the late, great Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. I don't know if you know who mm -hmm, Patrice, mm -hmm. monster. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Davidson uh, and Bill Burr. And, and listen, I, and even if I had to take one off, listen, regardless as to the situation with Corey Holcomb, I think he's a beast. I think he's one of the, he's a beast. We might not be vibing no more personally, but he's a beast, man. But see, that, but that, that's what I was trying to, when I was saying earlier, that that is the comedy I grew up in. I'm like, yo, when it comes to just jokes, yeah. like why isn't like somebody like Corey Holcomb there? Is Have it because you seen he his material? Because he wouldn't clean up his material? Maybe. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm sure that's got something to do with it. Like, <laughs> Again, it, pure but cocaine, man. But it's com. It, but that is comedy. To some people, it's it's, it's, it's like assault. Of home, it's something looking like Bob Homer. Homer. He told I, he, he told one chick, uh, "Girl, I bet you the inside of your panties look like hot wing paper." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like that's funny. Like I know, I know it's brutal on women. I know his comedy is brutal on women. But get outside of yourself right. and just say, we're gonna look at it as just jokes. Right. Like I, this is funny. People treat my comedy like, like I'm a threat. Like I'm bringing a, a gun into a, a, a locker room. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. It hit, hey. But that's why I do, Gil, because you don't give a. I, Anybody I, can say I, anything to you, you're not your... I don't care because of what I watch. I, impre impressions, impressions. Imp yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But <laughs> what I said is, because you were great at impressions, yeah. what are your favorite ones to do? Uh, you know, I tell everybody, it's, it's a hot sauce game. <laughs> what they do? If Joel and B going to play ball, you got to play inside an outside game. You got to get 2810. If I got 2810, I was dominant. If I get 2810, I ain't dominant. Ain't that right, Dennis Robin? <laughs> <clears throat> I was surprised I actually won something in the NBA. <laughs> you could have gave me a damn lollipop. I didn't care. <laughs> they said you want to play for Phil Jackson, the great Michael Jordan. I said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> What's up? I don't care. <laughs> you know, I, I talked to I talked to Tony Soprano every like basketball. I love anything with the <laughs> chef. <laughs> great. When I'm at the bang and I'm hanging out with my guys, Uncle Sil, Uncle Junior Johnny Shaq, Boy, Christopher, I love watching you this job, crazy. As long as you don't my daughter, Meadow, or my son AJ. Yo, like. <laughs> so last how, question. How long does how long? You know, uh, it's just. I guess it's just a gift. It's yeah, it's a, a gift. gift. It's like it's like you know, people that can sing, they have an ear for tone, inflection, rhythm, cadence. So you know, Shaq is of course, bassy. So when you say 28 turn, you gotta get 28 turn. Mm -hmm. You know, James Gandolfini is the ish. <laughs> when I talk to my sister Jadish, I look at you and Johnny Shaq. They gotta get an A. You know, or if, or uh, you know, Dennis sounds like he's gargling on his own semen. Uh, anytime I, I do what I gotta do. Yeah, I don't give it. I'm not supposed to. You know, so it's just finding the the note and the pitch that works for you. Paul Mooney, nigga, is down here. Everybody knows you've got to have the swag. You've got to sound like you just finished sucking a dick because he was a little fruity. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to know, we, has anybody ever tried to come at you or press you for doing You know, uh, DMX was, you know, I remember uh, Jay-Z had a big concert at the Staples Center. And uh, at the time, I, I just produced my comedy album CD. And I went to the Staples Center because Method Man, I was hanging out with Red and Meth that night. And they was like, yo, we about to go to the concert, roll with us. So I'm there. I see Busta Rhymes. I see so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. so I'm getting all these celebrities to endorse my set. Yo, Ari Spears, get the album. Hilarious. And I see an ex and I was like, yo, ex, you're like, yo, dog, I need to holler at you, you know what I mean? I heard you did some shit with my voice. Uh, if it's good, yeah. If it's not, uh, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. 
<laughs> but it ended, he ended up liking it. Okay, okay. Yeah. You've done what you've done. You've done everybody, Eddie. Like, a little MTV, bit. I mean, uh, Mad TV, that's where you did a lot. Yeah. That's where, yeah. And the, the most, the fun ones is when you're trying to get somebody new. Like, I don't know if I have them down yet, but I, I always say, I like Joel and B, but when I get the ball in the paint, I got to play dominant in the game. <laughs> and when I go up for the pose, I got to be more aggressive. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> speed it up. <laughs> speed it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and I know I don't have them, but I, I, yeah, because yeah. I idolize them so much. Like my, and Michael Jordan, especially certain things Michael would say, you know, for the city of Chicago, <laughs> you know, certain draws, you know, oh, hang out my father, play golf with my kids, and uh, to the fans of the city of Chicago. Now, I don't, I don't have it, have it, but, you know, I'm, I'm, that's one I really want to get. Well, Aries, we appreciate you pulling up. Oh, and my podcast, y'all. Well, yeah. I was about to plug it. Yes. Said, oh, I shit. About to plug oh, okay. Spears and Steinberg podcast. Spears and Steinberg podcast. Uh, we about, like, almost 400 episodes. Please subscribe to it. It's available on all streaming platforms. And I'm going to tell you this. Even though we're, like, 400 episodes in, if you can, go from the beginning and go in order because contextually the jokes the callbacks if you listen now you might not get certain references that i promise you will be 10 times more funnier if you listen from the beginning so binge do what you got to do treat it like a bag of chips you don't just eat one you eat the whole (laughs) bag well Aries, we appreciate you it's been another episode of no chill with gilbert arenas we'll be back with more very soon i got one question is regular different from nba A little bit. Okay. <laughs>